Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com, to another blog and to another podcast. I'd like to welcome those who access the podcast through the Be Young Ministry YouTube channel and the, the Rumble channel. Today we continue our study of Mark. We're in chapter 1, verses 16 through 18, which reads, As Jesus was walking along the shore of Lake Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew. They were fishermen and were casting their nets into the lake. Jesus said to them, Follow me. I will teach you how to bring in people instead of fish. Right then the two brothers dropped their nets and went with him. That's Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 18. In Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 8, we hear the voice of John the Baptist in the wilderness. In Mark chapter 1, verse 11, we hear the voice of God from the heavens. In Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 20, we hear the voice of the Lord Jesus by the sea. The emphasis is obviously on the voice. And as will become obvious later, the voice we listen to. In our passage today, we are introduced to two fishermen who had each missed out on becoming a disciple to some rabbi. In that day, there were four steps involved in becoming a disciple. Beth Sefer, Beth Madish, Beth Talmid, and the yoke. These were the first four steps in becoming a disciple. And becoming a disciple is synonymous with what we call sanctification. Now, in the first step, at age four or five, the children began their study, memorizing the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. In step two, the best students continued their studies being taught by a rabbi in the community. During this time, they memorized the whole Old Testament until they were 15 years old. In step three, the students received permission to study with a famous rabbi, leaving home to travel with him for a lengthy period of time. In step four, if the student learned well, the rabbi would place his yoke or his teachings upon the student. Now, according to Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, the Lord Jesus came preaching the kingdom of God. The Lord Jesus calls out to these men to follow him, and they walk away from their livelihood. According to John chapter 1, Peter and Andrew had already met the Lord Jesus. They had profited by the ministry of John the Baptist. In addition, they had accompanied Jesus at a marriage in Cana, and they accompanied him at a Passover in Jerusalem. In John 1, the calling of the disciples was a call to believe in Christ unto salvation. A year later, here in Mark chapter 1, we see the call of the Lord Jesus to these men to follow him as his disciples. Here in Mark chapter 1, the emphasis is on discipleship. Many use the word disciple as synonymous with that of a Christian. As Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 18 illustrates, there's a difference between a Christian and a disciple, just as there is a difference between our justification and sanctification. When we follow the Lord Jesus, he defines and shapes us. He defines and shapes us for purposes that perfectly fit or suit his plan for our lives. Following the Lord Jesus means submitting to his definition of all things and his vision for our lives. The mission isn't dependent on us. It's dependent on the Lord Jesus, who takes upon himself the task of transforming the disciple into a fisher of men. He does not ask us to transform ourselves. He asks us to follow him. And if we follow him, he will transform us. It's a process, and it doesn't happen overnight. Now, 
If we embrace the Lord Jesus' acceptance of us, the world's acceptance of us will shrink in importance to us over time. We will be increasingly liberated to offer our authentic selves to the world. And like the disciples, we will eventually bless the world with our authentic selves. The Lord Jesus is liberating. Now, <clears throat> not just anyone embraces the liberation the Lord Jesus offers. Only those who have been set free by our law-giving, law-keeping, and law-liberating Savior. We learn to love the ways of God as we get to know Him and His heart for us and for the world. Being liberated results in us being free to delight in God and in His definitions of all things. The Lord Jesus came not to abolish the law of Moses, but to, in fact, fulfill it perfectly on our behalf. His death is our death. His life is our life. His fulfillment is our freedom. His duty is our delight. Our abundant life of freedom in Christ is not simply a freedom to do anything we want to do, but to have the uninterrupted spirit-sustaining power to do what we know we ought to do as God slowly defines us and daily transforms us. Daily he cries out to us to follow his voice and to ignore all of those who are in opposition to him. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helpful to you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.